welcome back everybody here in you or in twitch chat and also on youtube uh if you're watching this one later so we have uh, gone through white and blue in our war of the spark standard set review and now we are in black so before we get here i will click quickly go through our grading scale uh you can find this grading scale in the uh if you just hit exclamation point grade, if you're here in Twitch chat, or also it's in the YouTube description if you're watching this video later on over there. But in case you're just listening here, I'll go ahead and, and quickly go through these. So an A is a format staple among multiple decks. A B is a defining card in a singular highly played deck or a role player that sees play among multiple decks or a very common sideboard card. A C is a powerful card that sees play in fringe decks, a card that is common in a highly played deck, or a fringe sideboard card. A D is a card that you'll sometimes see in standard, but it's underpowered or a janky build around card. And an F is a card that shouldn't really see any standard play, and Fs are only given to mythics and rares. There's also the limited ranking, and those are for commons and uncommons that shouldn't see any standard play. Okay. Um, so yes, we have already gone over white and blue, and now we are on to black. Um, you can find all of these videos later on on the YouTube channel, um, youtube.com slash ToddStevensMTG as well. White is already up there, and blue is being uploaded as we speak. All right, first card is Aid the Fallen, one in a black sorcery. Choose one or both. Return target creature card from your hand to your, or sorry, return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand or return target Planeswalker card from your graveyard to your hand. So best case scenario is you're spending two mana to return a creature and a Planeswalker from your graveyard to your hand. That is some, some really good value. Having, being able to, having it's two mana draw two where it's, it's better than just draw two because you have the selection. You get to choose what creature do you really want? What Planeswalker do you really want? Now you do of course need creatures and Planeswalkers in your, in your graveyard. And it's not like you, it's not always a draw too. You don't always, you don't get to just choose two creatures. If you just have a bunch of creatures, for example, you're only getting one creature. So you, you do need to be playing uh, both creatures and planeswalkers uh, for this one. Um, so yeah, it's, it's kind of like find, right? With find finality. Uh, with, we've seen how good find is of like, hey, I want these two creatures. But you also, you get the planeswalker also. So like would... Like, would you like a soul tie deck kind of want to play this where you can get a Vivian and a creature? You don't have the finality part, right? Like, so that's that's tough. Um, so probably not. This is probably just a limited card, and this looks to be a, a pretty good limited card because planeswalkers are going to be all over limited where you get a planeswalker every pack, right? Because you can't get two creatures, which is tough. So, I think this is just a limited card, but it, it has some potential. It's, it's a card to keep in mind, uh, whenever you're building decks. Um, so solid limited card. Banehound, a black for a 1-1 one, one lifelink haste. This is a weird card. Black creatures with haste? That's not very common, right? I can't, I can't think of any other just solely black creature that has haste. Uh, Prue. Uh, I'm gonna go with Prue for your name. Hopefully that's good enough. <laughs> Prue, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub there. You are amazing. It is a good doggo. That is true. Icarid. That is a black creature with haste. There you go. Um, <laughs> this is the bad guy from Never Ending Story. Miri the Curse that also has flying and haste. Okay, so there are a couple. So it has happened. Um... But overall, this is just a limited card. I don't expect this Nightmare Hound to see any play in standard. 1-1 one, one body is just very, very small. Uh, it's going to get Chain World away. So that's a limited card. Bleeding Edge, 1 BB. Up to 1 target creature gets minus 2, minus 2 until end of turn. A mass 2. This looks like a, a limited card at first glance, but I guess I could see it doing something. If you think of it being the mass 2 being a 2-2 two, two creature... This is like a three mana two two that gives another creature minus two minus two. Like that's not that's not bad. Um, yeah, bleeding edge. It's baby chupacabra, basically. 
you would want this in like some kind of spell matters deck, like something like where you're trying to get, you know, like where you can get instants and sorceries and things like that. Um, so yeah, it's decent. It, it's certainly decent. It's not. It's not. It's not bad. I I think this. I'm still giving it the limited rating though. I I don't expect it to see standard play, but it's decent. Whoa, Rex has it as a B. The Bleeding Edge? Because it's a solid Amass card? I mean, I, I guess if there's, like, a, a specific Amass deck, but, like, I don't I don't feel like the Amass cards work too well together. Because if this is just put two 1-1 one, one counters on a creature you control, and then also another creature gets minus two, minus two, that doesn't seem like that's good enough for three mana. So I'm I'm going with yeah, I'm going with a uh, a limited card. I I don't even think this is a D really. Um, limited. A couple people says I think a mass will play better than it looks. I mean I I think I think a mass is the kind of thing that doesn't uh, it doesn't it's not great to have a ton of a mass cards. Sorry. It's not great to have a ton of Amass cards together, but I think the first Amass card is very good. I think that if, <clears throat> you know, if you're making the creature, it's usually, like, a pretty good value of, like, making the creature and the other thing. It's just your second Amass card being 1-1 one -one counters is, is not very good kind of thing. <clears throat> so against aggro, is, is, this, is Bleeding Edge better than Chupacabra? It depends. I mean, against 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 aggro, um, you do want to kill Goblin Chain Whirler and Benelish Marshal quite a bit, and Tempest Gin. Like those are those are three in very important cards to kill, and this doesn't kill any of them. Kind of thing. <clears throat> All right. Um, next card. This looks like a fun one here. Bolus's Citadel. Three BBB legendary artifact. You may look at the top card of your library at any time. You may play the top card of your library. If you cast a spell this way, pay life equal to its CMC rather than pay its mana cost. And then also you may tap it and sacrifice 10 non-land permanents to have each opponent lose 10 life. This card looks pretty sweet. This looks like a fun card to build around. There is a lot of life gain in this set. Just kind of some random life gain here and there. And I think that's going to be... That's like what you need with Bulls of Citadel. You need to play a ton of cards that gain you life. It's similar to Lich's Mastery in that uh, respect. Because if you're casting your spells for, for free by just paying life equal to the CMC, you're going to need to gain that life back. So yeah, like Revitalize, perfect. Um, <clears throat> so I was kind of thinking of this in like, a, in like an Abzan deck. There's the new the new green white Johnny for four loyalty has the has a tick up of gain three life, so that only costs one one life to get that Johnny on the battlefield. You can have like Knight of Autumn also. There's some different mana like there's like a new green mana creature that like gains three life whenever it enters. Um, there's uh, one card in particular with green like I'm not sure if that that other green card that I just mentioned would be good enough that mana creature uh there's things like bond of flourishing you gain three life reveal a permanent card you know you can go find your your bolus of citadel with this uh this was the other one centaur nurture just gain three life if you you know want to help help cast your triple black bolus citadel um where is this other card though planar celebration this is the one so this would cost seven life to cast but then you can choose four so you can you can gain four life four times you can gain 16 life which that's a lot of life <laughs> yeah see so yeah you can go palaka worm um and uh yeah palaka worm just you pay your seven life but then you gain it back i feel like you can do a whole lot of things with that um you may want you may want uh let's see what um and yeah you can't play the top card so yeah you can play lands with it but you only get one land drop a turn yeah gift to paradise yeah gift to paradise works really well with it 
um, can you pay life when under zero life? So like with Lich's Mastery. So no, yeah, you cannot you cannot pay life you don't have. Um, and uh, yeah, this is definitely stopped by Tibalt for sure. Uh, what was I saying? Wayward Swordtooth. Yeah, you, you could probably want like Wayward Swordtooth out there also, even though Wayward Swordtooth doesn't gain you life, but Wayward Swordtooth lets you play multiple lands. So like if you hit, you know, two lands, you can play them both and then keep playing your spells again kind of thing. Um, but yeah, Bullets of Citadel seems like a cool card to build around it. And maybe there's a, a real deck there, you know, like that is a, a lot of cards that you, you can potentially play. Um, off the top with uh, as long as you have like the initial life to play it and then you know you gain your life back kind of thing um, so turn three kill possible in standard so new soren gives all your creatures lifelink right so yeah if you're playing like those kind of creatures and everything yeah new soren you can give them lifelink um I'm not sure exactly how X spells work. How do X spells work with this? Because you pay life equal to its CMC. Is that like an alternate cost so you can't X spell? So X spell has to be zero. That's what I. Okay, so X spells don't work. Um, otherwise, oh yeah, Sa Sanguine Sacrament would be insane with this card. Otherwise, <laughs> yeah. So that's right. Yeah, you can't do that. Um, but yeah, so there's, I, I feel like Bolas of Citadel, you, you can build a, a cool deck and I'm, I'm thinking Abzan color, uh, along with it, get a whole bunch of lifelink kind of stuff. Um, so does that mean it's a D? Is it like a janky build around card with that? Or is it a little better? Um, is it like a fringe? Can you build like a, a, a real fringe deck with Bolas of Citadel? Maybe. Maybe it's like a it's a, a powerful card in fringe deck in a fringe deck. Um, that's it could be a little better than just a janky deck. So C minus okay, I can go with C minus. It's kind of around there. Is it fringe or is it janky? Is it janky fringe? We'll go with C minus. But yeah, this this is a card that I'm gonna I'm gonna make an Abzan deck here. Now, this will be one of the first cards that I make a deck around, as I talked about, like, all those cards with it. I think I think we make a pretty cool Abzan deck with Bola Citadel. All right, Bond of Revival. Four and a B, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste until end of turn. So there is... There's already a lot of... Um, cards around the five mana part in standard that put creatures from the graveyard onto the battlefield. This one does give it haste, but this is all that it does. It doesn't do anything else. Um, I don't expect, I think this is just a limited card, um, but if you really, really want to um, have this effect, you know, if you want to play like some whatever kind of big creatures and put them back onto the battlefield, you can. Um, yeah, you, it's good with the Boar God. That is true. Giving the Boar God haste um, if you let the Boar God die. It's pretty sweet with uh, Niv-Mizzet. Um, if you want, like, the Niv-Mizzet ETB effect and, you know, hopefully draw a lot of cards with Niv-Mizzet's ETB effect kind of thing and you don't have to worry about Niv-Mizzet being five colors to cast, you can bring it back with Bonder Revival. Um, uh, give a resume of the bomb cards for limited. Um, that I would have to like go, but we'd have to go back through all the cards and look to try to find the, the bomb cards for limited. Um, I don't think we'll really have time for that tonight. Eager. So sorry. Um, but yeah, so bond revival, I'm going to just give it the limited, uh, rating too. I don't think it's really going to be a constructed card, but uh, it has it has potential. You know, it has has some potential to do some things though. Um, well, the the gods are no the the gods don't just go back in all the time, right? Like, isn't it a isn't it a may? 
Yeah, the gods are a may. You can put them into your graveyard if you want. Like if it was gonna die, you don't you don't have to put it back into your library. All right, charity extract extractor three and a black for a one five life link. That is just a limited card, of course. Command of the Dread Horde. We were talking about this one earlier when we were talking about um, the Wanderer. That's right, the Wanderer uh, in the white cards. So four black black sorcery. Choose any number of target creatures and or planeswalker cards in graveyards. Command the Dread Horde deals damage to you equal to the total number, sorry, the total converted mana cost of those cards. Put them onto the battlefield under your control. So you can return all sorts of creatures and planeswalkers, but you take damage equal to the CMC. So that is a, a lot of damage. So is this card playable without the Wanderer? Maybe not. So Gideon's Sacrifice is insane with this. So the the Wanderer prevents the damage, right? So like it's it's insane with the Wanderer. How does Gideon's Sacrifice work with it? Ah, okay. So you just choose a creature. So you have to have another creature or Planeswalker in play, but then yeah, you deal all the damage to that thing. Okay. So that that's another piece of that kind of deck. So if we want like a a self mill deck. Um, where we can get a bunch of things in the graveyard and then bring them all back and try to... We, you could have Command the Dread Horde and then Gideon Sacrifice or the Wanderer. Um, so that's a good combo. Um, so I'm, I'm calling this this card a D. I think this is a janky build-around card. I think that's that's what that deck is. Um, you know, So I, I think this is a D. But it, that sounds like a fun janky build-around card, though. Yeah, Angel. Yeah, you could do if you had if you were playing like an older format, you could have Angel of Grace with this also. Yeah, or True Fire Captain. Um, yeah, if you if you have True Fire Captain in play, and then you Gideon Sacrifice target the True Fire Captain, and then you cast Command the Dread Horde, and you bring a ton of things in and deal just a ton of damage to your True Fire Captain. Then your true fire captain deals that damage to the opponent. So, there we go. So Mardu, uh, you know, you play Star of Extinction in that deck also. True. So now the true fire captain Star of Extinction deck is getting better um, because you know you can have the Wanderer prevent the damage from Star of Extinction to all your stuff also. All right, uh, Daffriel Rogue Shadow Mage, two in a black. Um, at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, if that player has one or fewer cards in hand, Davriel, Rogue, Shadow Mage, deals two damage to them. Minus one target player discards a card. Um, wow. <clears throat> okay, so I don't think... so. All right, for, first people have asked about like my Grixis discard deck. Would you want Davriel, Rogue, Shadow Mage in it? And I don't think so. I, I don't think that, that it's powerful enough for, for that deck. Um. It is A plus R. This art art is awesome. However, uh, if we think about like I've been playing recently like mono black zombies, or uh, also I've kind of changed into mono black aggro. Also, I have like those two like mono black decks, like you know like Dreadshade aggro. This like Davriel is actually a really good card for that deck as a sideboard card against control. Like this is like the kind of sideboard card that I've wanted in uh, in like a Dreadshade aggro deck. Um, so <clears throat> that's so I'm excited about the card there. Um, you know, you can activate it twice. It's a mind drop, plus it sticks around and can deal damage. Or if you don't think it, you need it to stick around and deal damage, you can make it discard another card. Um, you can target yourself to discard art like Phoenix. Yeah, you can. That that could be something you could do because <laughs> it's target player. Um, yeah. So. Uh, so yeah, so basically it could be a fringe sideboard card. That's what I'm kind of seeing this as, a fringe sideboard card. So like a C minus, uh, like probably a little more fringe than like Collision Colossus kind of thing. Um, but I could see black aggro decks having this as a sideboard card basically. Um, yeah, so I'll go C minus on Davriel. But I, I am excited about this card in 
like mono black zombies um, or mono black aggro for a cyborg card there. Davriel's Shadow Fuge. Is that how you pronounce that? Maybe. If it's not, pretend like I pronounced it correctly. <laughs> yeah. I don't think you can make yourself discard Null Hide. I don't think it works like that. Um, Fugi? Fug Fugu? Fugu? Davriel's Shadow Fugu? Hmm. Three and a B. Target player discards two cards and loses two life. That is a limited card. Fuga. Fuge. That's what I was saying. It was Fuge. So, yeah. That's what I said the first time. So, hopefully that was correct. Anyway, just a limited card. <clears throat> Sorry. Shadow. Fuge. And not even a very good one. But not a standard card. <clears throat> Deliver unto evil. Two and a B. Choose up to four target cards in your graveyard. If you control a, a Bolus Planeswalker, return those cards to your hand. Otherwise, an opponent chooses two of them. Leave the chosen cards in your graveyard and put the rest into your hand. Exile, deliver unto evil. Um, first, this, this art is pretty cool. And it's not really art that you'd normally see on magic cards these days. It's kind of like some old school art, but... It does look really cool. You know, you have what Gideon, Chandra, Ajani, Jace there uh, with the Nicol Bolas. You have those four Planeswalkers. That's why it has the four cards kind of thing. This is your favorite art in the set? Yeah, I can see it. How is this going to be played in standard? I'm not exactly sure. One thing about this wording I don't like. I don't like how it's the opponent chooses two of them and then you leave those in the graveyard. When you Like, let's say, let's say your opponent casts this and you're choosing them. Don't you just want to, like, you usually choose the cards that they put in their hand, right? It just makes more sense to, like, here's the cards you put in your hand. Not choose the cards and then you leave those in your graveyard. I I feel like people are going to mess up on this card all the time. That this is going to be the thing where people are going to be like, oh, no, I selected the wrong ones. Like, on, you know, when they're playing this on Arena kind of thing. Um So he says, I prefer the more hand-drawn art to computer-generated stuff by a million times. Yeah, like this, like like this right here, you can obviously tell, is, like this one is definitely just, you know, computer, computer animated thing. But then this is hand-drawn stuff. Uh, Gorm says, playable B. Uh, Getterx says, if this card is good, it'll have to be good without Bolas, right? Yeah, so this would have to be good without Bolas. And that's, that's why I'm not sure if it is. So it, it's like... So it's it's a draw two for three, like let's say without bolus it's a draw two for three mana in black it's black divination where your opponents choose the two cards you get but they get like you get the third and the fourth best card in your graveyard basically so you you don't get the first two it seems very I'm very skeptical that that's actually good enough for standard. Um, and yeah, that's true. If you only have three cards, this wording makes it worse because if you only have three, you choose your three cards and then your opponent chooses two of them and you only get one. You get the worst one if you only have three cards. I guess if the wording was the other way, um, then you would get the second and third best cards. You'd get two cards. So I guess I guess that's one thing about the wording. And so yeah, if you have two cards, then you don't you don't get a card kind of thing. Hmm. So I'm I'm feeling like this is like a if you have bolus you just get all the cards I guess. So if you have a bol but there's two bolus planeswalkers and they're both incredible. Do you really need this card after you have your bolus planeswalkers in play and you're untapping with them and then do you need this to draw some other cards? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think this is an F. Like I, I'm trying to think of why why this wouldn't be an F, but I don't know. I feel like this is just an F. I I don't think this will will see play. No, if you have if you have bolus, you get all four. Because if you 
because you choose four, and then if you have a bolus, you, you return them all back to your hand. So you get all four. I, I could see this being a D. You, you want to build build around this, a, a janky build around with this and bolus. I feel like people will do that to start with, but yeah. So I, I guess maybe a D. A D it's, it's a D or an F. All right, Dreadhorde Invasion. One in a B, enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, you lose a life and amass one. Whenever a zombie token you control with power six or greater attacks, it gains lifelink until end of turn. <laughs> so bad bitter blossom is what somebody says, and I kind of agree. I I think bitter blossom making like a one one token each time would be better, you know, is better than this. However, we don't have bitter blossom, so it's not it's not like you can just play bitter blossom instead. You know, like the, if we're talking about standard, bitter blossom's not in standard. So, dreadhorde invasion doesn't seem like something you'd want against an aggro deck. Right? I don't know if you'd want to be losing a life making a one one each turn against an aggro deck. However, against control. You lose a life, you make a 1-1. One, one. The next turn, they can just ignore it. The next turn, you lose another life, and now that thing's a 2-2, two, two, and it gets to attack them as a 2-2. Two, two. And then... So I guess you play this on turn 2. On turn 3, you lose a life and make a 1-1. One, one. On turn 4, you lose a life. You, you turn it into a 2-2, two, two, and you're attacking them for 2. On turn 5, you're losing another life. You're making a 3-3. Three, three. You attack them for 3 then they kill this thing and then on turn six you lose another life and you make another one one and you kind of start over i i think it is a, a good sideboard card for a black aggro like i could definitely see playing this in the black aggro deck in this in the sideboard again against control also like same with davriel i think it kind of competes with davriel for that slot as like your sideboard against control but it's certainly i, I think i'd rather have this than like argos bloodfast for example yeah it's slow but steady um it's it's not great if you're playing against, like, if they drop, like, a, a Lyra Dawnbringer that you can't deal with, and they're suddenly hitting you with this Lyra and gaining life, and then you're losing life also. Um, yeah, assume, so that's, that I was assuming no other mass mechanics there, correct, as, like, the card on its own. I was I was assuming that. Um, with other mass mechanics, does this get better? I feel like it may just get worse. If you're already doing other mass stuff... Do you want to lose a life to make your 5-5 five, five a 6-6? Six, six, and then your 6-6 six, six a 7-7? Seven, seven? Maybe. Maybe it doesn't It doesn't necessarily get worse. Okay, it, yeah, it doesn't necessarily get worse. Because you do want to grow this. Because whenever you do grow it to be, like, turn your 5-5 five, five into a 6-6, six, six, you know, we'll start getting lifelink and that kind of stuff. So that that is certainly good. Um, is this a, a main deck card? Are you going to be, like, main deck? Oh, yeah. Mortify isn't standard. Absolutely. You know, like, this This isn't great against Mortify, for sure. But, I mean, that's okay. Um, is this going to be a main deck card? In, like, a, a, a regular archetype that sees a good amount of play. So yeah, like would Judith Priest play this? Like would you play this main deck with like maybe you would play this with Priest of Forgotten Gods? You know, you make your token, you get to sack your token. Like it does seem pretty awesome with Priest of Forgotten Gods. That's a good call. I could see like the Judith Priest deck playing this thing. You do have to you know, you you kind of have to like a deck like that you kind of have to start worry about like the the loss of life and wanting to find some ways to gain life kind of thing. Um, yeah, it's, it's tougher with Mardu for sure. I like when you're, when you're playing a Mardu deck and you're losing a lot of life from a bunch of shock lands, that's definitely tougher to play something like this. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, you could play Soren. Yeah. Soren could handle that loss of life really well. Yeah, it works really well with the new Soren giving your creatures lifelink. That's a good that's a good call. Soren if if you want to go Mardu that is and play Soren that that's all right. All right, we're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. 
So I like this in a, in a mono black aggro deck as a cyborg card against control. And then, yeah, if you want to build around it with like Priest of Forgotten Gods, New Soren, um, that kind of stuff. Main deck in Grixis, I don't, I don't like that. You're just pretty slow in Grixis, and this is this is a another really slow card, and it's hard to, you're not really gaining your life back in Grixis. I don't think like a Grixis mid range control deck wouldn't want this card. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm higher on this card now than what we were before. You know, like talking about this card with Priest and with Soren. I like both of those quite a bit. Um, so I could see this, uh, I could see this maybe being a B, you know, a highly played sideboard card or also, and also a card that we'll see like some, some main deck play and some other, uh, maybe a little bit more fringe archetypes, but you know, it sees play in a, a variety of decks. I think Dreadhorde Invasion, I, I'm going to go with a B. Let's go, let's go with that. I wasn't I wasn't as high on it before we were talking about it here. Maybe a B minus. Yeah, I could I could see maybe doing B minus. I could see that. I could see that. Bitter Blossom minus, it should be B minus. Alright, I'm good with going with B minus. Yeah, not not a bad. It's really good with Soul Diviner. Hmm. What does Soul Diviner say exactly? It's like sack a creature, draw a card. Blah. Just scroll so far down. Remove a counter from an artifact creature or lands or plane, planeswalker, draw a card. So you remove like the, the amass counter from something, draw a card. Nah, I don't I don't know. I'm not I'm not really feeling that. I'm not I'm not sure if that's going to be what you want to be doing in standard. <clears throat> All right, Dread Malkin little zombie cat uh black for a one one menace so we have two separate black one ones one has lifelink haste one has menace and then you can pay three and sacrifice another creature and put two one one counters on it and dread malkin the th the three is a lot of mana to pay you know i guess if you want to like you know sack your dread horde invasion and you play this on Dreadmock on one, Dreadhorde Invasion on two, on three, you get the upkeep, you pay your three, you sack it, you put two counters on this thing. It, this is just a limited card. It, that's just too much to to pay. You love the card for limited? Yeah, it, it is a good limited card. But I think that's too much for standard, the three mana. <laughs> you can sacrifice a bolus to the cat. <laughs> All right, Dusk Mantle Operative, 1 and a B, 2-2. Two, two. Uh, can't be blocked by creatures power 4 or greater. This is a limited card as well. All right, the Elder Spell. Black, black, sorcery. Destroy any number of target planeswalkers. Choose a planeswalker you control. Put two loyalty counters on it for each planeswalker destroyed this way. Wow, what a card love just i just love the like like this is just a, a really well designed card um i love how it how you can have nickel bolus in play you cast elder spell destroy a bunch of planeswalkers put a bunch of loyalty on nickel bolus you ultimate nickel bolus and now you win the game since they don't have any uh planeswalkers left kind of thing i think it's okay even at sorcery speed being two mana I think that's I think that's perfectly fine. Um, it is awesome, flavorful, scary. I feel like this is an A for how important Planeswalkers are in the set. Having a two mana answer to Planeswalkers, yeah, I'm feeling like this is an A also. Like a lot of people here are here saying it's an A. 
the thing is it has a really low downside you know it does nothing but destroy planeswalkers so like if the opponent doesn't have any planeswalkers out this card does nothing we have bedevil which is instant speed which costs black black red that can also destroy a creature or an artifact but only gets one planeswalker this can destroy a few planeswalkers it is a it is a great sideboard card um Maybe this is more like a, a B plus. Maybe you think it's a sideboard card only. You don't think you can side. You don't think you main deck one of these in like a Grixis control deck. Yeah, you probably don't, do you? Hmm. In the right deck, it's always an A. It's it's really against the right deck. It's always an A, right? Because there's going to be decks that don't have planeswalkers. You know, like if you're playing against just you know for. The examples are now like if you have gates or is it drakes i guess they could have a rail um but then obviously mono mono red mono blue but oh that's true so if you that's a good point good point so because you you can just use it on your own so that's what you're saying so yeah in your own deck good good point there freeman good point it, in your own deck it, it can be good because you can just kill your own planeswalkers to fuel an ultimate of another planeswalker um yeah so you can so even then it's not it's never a dead card uh if you just want to trade one planeswalker in for multiple loyalty counters on another planeswalker kind of thing yeah you elder spell your kaya to pump your teferi to teferi ult which you know wins the game kind of thing um yeah for like you use you use one you know you use a planeswalker like a four man of raska that you minus and then, you know, right after you minus, you get rid of... Because it's pretty easy to double spell with with Elder Spell. You know, six mana, you can play a four mana Vraska, sack it, or like, you know, minus, kill something, sack your Vraska to add two loyalty counters to your Vivian that you played on turn five kind of thing. Um, it, does see like, it does seem like a very, very common cyborg card, which is a B. So maybe it's not an... Yeah, it's probably not an A that's just like a a format staple in multiple archetypes like you know hydroid crisis kaya's wrath kind of thing so it does seem like a b where it's a very common sideboard card or you can you can build around it to make it even so maybe it's even a little bit better how you can kind of build around it so maybe a b plus um it is a really good card to redirect with the with the uu card that's true um so he says, also, Super Friends has literally never been a top tier archetype, and I don't think that's going to change. That's a B we have a bunch of B minuses here. So I'm going to go B then. I won't go B plus. I'll go B because most everybody's putting B minus, and we got a C plus in there. <laughs> yeah, usually, yeah. <laughs> Somebody says, well, if you already have multiple planeswalkers resolved, don't you don't you already win? That's true. Alright, Eternal Taskmaster. So I'm gonna go with the B for there. Um highest card so far in black. So far we've had Elder Spell at B and Dreadhorde Invasion at B minus. Eternal Taskmaster, uh one and a B for a two three and enters the battlefield tapped. Whenever Eternal Taskmaster attacks, you may pay two and a black. If you do return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. So I don't know about this one. Uh, black zombie decks have really been struggling with the two mana slot. Um, this card, you know, when you talk about like graveyard marshal is like the same is like, you know, two mana, three, two does not enter to the battlefield tapped and you can just pay three and make two twos. This can re this has to attack to get the trigger, and then you pay three, and you just put a creature from your graveyard back to your hand. So it could be a roll filler if you like if you end up needing another two mana card in like a zombie deck. I think that's about the only place it can it can go. So I think it's like a it's like a a D minus basically. Um, yeah, very good limited card. Yes, very good limited card. But I think standard, maybe like a D minus, it, it can fill a role, uh, but it'll mostly be a limited card. 
Yeah, but Ice Wrath does cost three mana. The, it's just, it's just, it, it can fill the two mana slot in like a zombie deck, which two mana slot in that deck is is pretty rough, which I guess does lend credence to Dreadhorde Invasion even more. All right, finale of eternity. X black black destroy up to three target creatures with toughness X or less. If X is ten or more, return all creature cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. So at like five mana, you can destroy three creatures with toughness three or less. That's not a very good card. At seven mana, you can destroy three creatures with toughness five or less. And that's kind of good, but that's seven mana. I I feel like this is just an F. I don't I don't think that you're gonna ever play this card, right? So I guess if you're playing like a, a big time ramp deck, you'd have to play like a you have to be playing like a, a green ramp deck where you can get a lot of mana and you can and then you want to you know then you can destroy three creatures kind of thing. Um <laughs> it is a mythic. I think this is the worst mythic in the set. It is a mythic. Even Golgari, like... <laughs> with BB, you can destroy three targets with zero toughness. <laughs> I mean, I guess... if you, I go, Okay. So if you're sideboard against, like, mono-white aggro, if you think about, like, at three mana, you have, like, Golden Demise kind of thing. If you think about it like that... This could cost like four mana and destroy three things with two toughness or less at four mana. That's just worse. <laughs> you just rally play ritual of set. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm going F. Ox says, I'm way underrating this. Kill three red deck wins creatures for four mana. Or three for Benelish Marshall for five. Yeah, but you'd rather just play like ritual of set and stuff like that. Yeah, like Cry of the Carnarium, Ritual, so like those all just cards that you'd rather have than this. All right, F Finale of Eternity, Final Grade, F. Um, basically, the only way to make a play is you have to be able to do this X10 or more thing. You have to be able to like ramp real hard and also have a bunch of creatures in your graveyard kind of thing. <clears throat> yeah not for control decks so if you're playing zombie you know model black zombies you're playing aggro would you want this in your sideboard okay maybe mono black zombies you want this in your sideboard instead of ritual of soot to try to kill ben like five mana kill benelish marshall and two other creatures maybe Maybe there. So I guess maybe a, a D. I, I could see that. Two mana does kill three tokens. Right? No, no, it's toughness X or less. No, yeah, it's it's toughness, not CMC. It's toughness. Yeah, so four zombies. Yeah. All right, never mind. I'll 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 go up to a D. Maybe we could maybe we can fit in like the mono. I could, I could envision that fitting in the mono black zombie sideboard. All right. All right, God Eternal Bantu. Yeah, Cabal Stronghold. Get to a lot a lot more mana with Cabal Stronghold. So if, a mono mono black mid range deck. That's playing your own creatures and things. Three black black, five six menace. When God Eternal Bantu enters the battlefield, sacrifice any number of other permanents, then draw that many cards. And whenever it dies or is put into exile from the battlefield, you may put it into its owner's library third from the top. So yeah, this is, obviously people are saying like this is the aristocrats card. So this is the card you want, like this is the afterlife card, right? Like when you're playing your creatures with afterlife or creatures like hunted witness type cards, cards that 
can get you other bodies or creatures that give you value whenever they die. This is like the card for you. The cool thing is that it's any number of other permanents. So even if you flood out, you can, you know, keep playing your lands. If you flood out, you can sacrifice lands to draw cards also. Um, so yeah, it's a flood solver. Um, we we're talking about maybe this with, um, this could maybe pair really well with God Eternal Oketra, that whenever you cast your creatures, you get four fours. Um, that like, there could be like a black white, you know, afterlife mid range kind of deck where your five mana slot are the two God Eternals, Oketra and Bantu. Um, those could work really well together. Uh, so it it kind of feels like it's going in decks that aren't really there right now. Like I'm not sure like Sultai you'd really want this card, um, because Sultai you want all your lands when you're playing like Hydroid Crisis you want all your lands and everything there, and um, so Tesa with this card, Tesa would let you draw twice as many, right? Oh, yeah, then there's also Mending of Dominaria, right? There's also, yeah, Mending of Dominaria kind of thing if you want to sacrifice all your lands and then you get them all back with Mending of Dominaria. There's also that kind of, that's that's pretty janky. Yeah, that's really janky, but you can do that. Um, okay, so so the answer is no. So you, you do not draw multiple with Tesa? Okay, so that's out of the question, but... Basically, I feel like I feel like you want like afterlife stuff with this, like Sarah for the Scales, Tithe Taker, um, that kind of thing. Uh, you know, you can have like your Priest of Forgotten Gods deck. You have the White God Eternal, uh, God Eternal Ketra, God, e God Eternal Bantu, um, both of those. Because you know, five mana, five six menace is nothing to sneeze at either. Like it's a really, really good body. Um, Otherwise, yeah, that, that's kind of about it's kind of about it. Um, your opponent gives you a captive audience, and then you play God Eternal Bantu and sacrifice the captive audience. Say booyah, draw a card. There you go. So there's a three CMC Rakdos Devil that I should look at. What's what's the name of the card? That y'all are saying it goes with this Rakdos Devil. This thing, whenever a player sacrifices a permanent, deals one damage to any target. Eh, I'm not so sure about that. I don't, I don't think... Uh, I don't know about that. Yeah, I, I don't think this card's... I think there's just... I think you'd rather just have, like, Midnight Reaper and Judith and all that kind of stuff than Mayhem Devil. Um, so yeah, Bantu looks pretty strong. Uh, you do definitely need to build around it for sure. So it's, it's the kind of thing that could be, so it would be a B if, if that archetype becomes highly played, you know, if it's kind of like gates, like I have like Gatebreaker Ram from last set as like a B cause it was like a, a card that only goes in one deck, but it goes into like a, a pretty highly played deck kind of thing. So if there is like a, something there between you know, a white black um, deck with the two God Eternals as the top end. That could be certainly be a B. I gave Oketra a B plus because I think Oketra you can just kind of put in a lot of other places because it just you know you cast creatures and you get four fours. It gives you a lot of good value. This I'm not sure you necessarily want to put it in too many other decks because again five mana cards there's a lot of good five mana cards like remember there's like doom whisper in the format you know like that's a great five mana card there's a lot of really good five mana cards um so i think this is more of like a b minus or oketra is a b plus i think bantu is like a b minus and of course that could go down quite a bit of if if that archetype doesn't see very much play it it goes down but that's kind of assuming the the archetype can kind of get there um yeah uh kefnet i gave a b plus 
All right, Herald of the Dread Horde, three and a black. Whenever it dies, amass two. Obviously, they're saying, hey, play this in your God Eternal Bantu deck. You can sack it and then amass two, but no. This is just a limited card. Um, yeah, that's... Yeah, I think that's just going to be a limited card. Kaya's Ghost Form. Black for an enchantment, aura, enchant creature, or planeswalker you control. Whenever enchanted permanent dies or is put into exile, return that card to the battlefield under your control. Hmm. This card has a lot of potential. You know, like... Y'all are saying A? Ghost form with Elder Spell is pretty nice. I mean, it, it does... I mean, when you do have a Nicol Bolas or a Teferi, you know, one of those Planeswalkers like that that are just so powerful, if you can put a ghost form on it so that whenever they die, you get it back, that's big game. That's big game. However... If you try casting a ghost form on your Teferi and then they exile your Teferi or kill it or what you know either one in response, you just got nothing out of your ghost form. You'll fizzle. If you know, if you um, like like what Esper control like like if you don't draw like your planeswalkers, like this card's not going to do anything unless you draw your planeswalkers and play your planeswalker and then try to put this on it. Um. You can put it on your, it is good on your, like, on, like, a card like Narset that only has minus abilities. Yeah, like, your your baby Planeswalkers, the Uncommons, that only have minus abilities. Carnage Tyrant loves this. I could see that. I could definitely see Carnage Tyrant liking this. Um... It does work with exile, but not like if they if they exile in response or kill it in response, you know. Um, so if you don't draw a planeswalker, then you can ditch this to Chemister's Insight. That's true. Or if you have like the Sarkin out, you can just ditch it to Sarkin or something like that. And a lot of people are saying A on this card. Some pe one person said bad card that does nothing. It's like a dive down, but not instant speed. I mean, you can certainly see like where it's really good of like returning your thing back to the battlefield, but I'm not sure if it's worth it playing in your deck, or you'd rather just play other cards. Um, so we'll say for the its cost, it's an A, A, it's a C. No, I, I like our, I like people in chat grading the cards too. I wasn't expecting to give this card a very good grade, and I still don't think I. I am. I I feel like it's it's probably a C with our, our letter grade here. Um, like maybe a card like a precognitive perception that some people play as like a one of kind of thing. It does pr work well if you're trying to play a sacrifice deck also. If you want to like play it on, um, you know, like a ravenous chupacabra or whatever. Like, like remember Journey to Eternity? Like, Journey to Eternity is awesome. Now, Journey to Eternity costs three instead of one, but it's basically unplayable. So this does cost one, which is, you know, that's a big deal. And this does enchant Planeswalkers, which that's a big deal too. There's a lot of blow-up potential with this kind of card. It's not just guaranteed that you get a Planeswalker. Because you can put, like... Okay, let's say you, you put this on your Teferi... And then your opponent just stops attacking your Teferi and just attacks you. But then, you know, you're, like, down a card there. You have to try to try to make up for it. No, I think, like, C-. minus. Yeah, Journey to, Journey to Eternity is vulnerable to Exile also, where this isn't. Um, it says C minus seems perfectly honest. Seems perfect, honestly. I am. I'm going with a C minus with this card. It has really high upside. It has a 
a very low floor. Do you want, is this better than putting other things in your deck? You know, you only have room for 60 cards in your main deck, 15 more on the sideboard. Are you really throwing Kaya's Ghost Form anywhere? I'm not, not sold. Go and see minus. Lazotep Behemoth, four and a black, five, four. That's just a limited card. Lazotep Reaver, one, two, uh, one and a black for a one, two. When Lazotep Reaver enters the battlefield, a mass one. That is another limited card. Um, and then we have Liliana Dreadhorde General. Four black, black, six loyalty planeswalker. Whenever a creature you control, a, or sorry, whenever a creature you control dies, draw a card. Plus one, create a 2-2 two, two black zombie creature token. Minus four, each player sacrifices two creatures. Minus nine, each opponent chooses a permanent they control of each permanent type and sacrifices the rest. Yeah. Lazotep Reaver is better. Goblin token plus 1-1 one, one token. This could be used in Goblin Tribal. That is true. Okay. All right. Yeah, actually, I mean, I, I kind of glanced over this card, you know, honestly. But this this could be in your God... Like, this could be a card you could play in your God Eternal Bond 2 deck or, like, as a 2-drop in your zombie deck. All right, I, I don't hate this card. So, you know, this could be, like, a... You know, this could actually be a, a role player kind of thing. Yeah, this could be like, a, you know, D plus, C minus kind of thing. Anyway, back to Liliana. Liliana is awesome. This is one of the most powerful cards in the set. It does cost six mana. Um, and it's... All right, so thinking about six mana Planeswalker, think about like Vraska Relic Seeker. Cost six mana. Has Vraska Relic Seeker has... Uh, it starts at six loyalty, just like this. It uh, has a plus two, makes a two two with menace, so that's better than just a two two without menace. Um, but then, Vraska Relic Seeker has a minus three that that says you know destroy any creature or artifact or enchantment, and this is each player sacrifices two creatures. It's probably, like, the minus four is probably better here. It's probably better to say each player sacrifices two creatures, but it's close. You know, you, you can't destroy enchantments or artifacts. So it's, they're, it's pretty comparable. Um, this does nothing versus creatureless control. This makes, this makes creatures. This makes tutus. And then they have the, the minus nine, um, which is, basically win the game pretty close um they get to choose like they keep one land and then they keep you know like one creature one planeswalker that kind of stuff um so yeah you have to sacrifice two as well um but you know if you're not playing other creatures that's not as bad i don't know i guess the main thing here is you get this this other clause is, is pretty clutch. Whenever any of your creatures die, you draw a card. Like, that's that's a really clutch. So, like, the pluses and minuses are pretty close to Vraska. Maybe not even better, but very similar. But the, the way where this is better than Vraska is this top part. Any of your creatures that die, you draw a card. You're making two twos. Whenever those two two dies, you draw cards. Um, you know, if you're playing this in, like, Sultai, um, any of your creatures that die... You, you draw cards that is that is like really where this card is awesome the minus four is really is not so bad it's yeah like that's that's not so bad especially when you have that that top clause that you can um draw some cards even if you have a couple of creatures out however how much play this is going to see at six mana in standard these days i'm, I'm not so sure but i like like this is a, a good like, this could be a good card for a lot of different archetypes, though. You know, it's not two colors like Vraska is. Um, this is, you know, this is amazing against uh, Carnage Tyrant. If if people play Carnage Tyrant still, this is this just destroys Carnage Tyrant. It's very bad. Uh, 
Liliana's very, very good against control. You get to make two twos and kill your opponent with two twos. Like that's not that's that's very good against control. Like tick up, make a two two is is awesome. Um, she could be a top end of priest decks like that that black white deck that we're talking about with God Eternal Bantu and Oketra could certainly have Liliana. Like maybe if you know if you can go a little bigger, make it a little more mid rangey uh, in your priest of forgotten god deck. Because, like, Priest of Forgotten Gods, remember how it adds the two black mana whenever you activate it? So if you can have four lands, you activate it, you get your Liliana, play your Liliana right then on, like, you know, turn four, uh, potentially. Um, if you just, you know, had, like, the other creatures in play. Um, and so, yeah, you could certainly see play there. I could see it see in play in some Soul Tie. It can draw you some cards and everything there. Um, like a Grixis control, like on top, like, you know, playing nickel bullets on five, having like Lily, like when you're not playing creatures, having like in like Grixis control or Esper control, either of those having like your minus four, make your opponent sacrifice two creatures when you're already playing a lot of other removal spells. That is awesome. Um, you're saying it's the exact card that Demir control needed. Yeah. Like, yeah. Demir control, uh, likes this card quite a bit. So I, I kind of see it being able to fit a ton of places. Um, kind of like how we have cards like Vivian and Teferi and stuff like that be able to fit a ton of places. Is it as good as like Vivian Teferi? You know, maybe not. Like those are definitely A's. Is this definitely an A? Maybe, maybe not. Um, you know, it could just be like a one or a two of in like there. But um, yeah, but this this does fit a lot of places. So... Does that mean A minus? B plus? Probably A, maybe A minus. I like A minus. Liliana, very splashy. Yeah, Teferi is like, Teferi is A plus. Like Liliana is one of the best cards in the set. So I'm gonna go A minus. Jack says, I think this is an A card. All right, Liliana's Triumph, one in a black instant. Uh, each opponent sacks a creature. If you control Liliana Planeswalker, they also discard a card. This certainly gives you incentive to want to play your Liliana Planeswalker, of course, because if you have that out, uh, two mana, sack a creature, disc discard a card is awesome. Instant speed discard is usually really powerful because um, by the time you have Liliana like Dreadhorde General in play, six mana. It's likely your opponent doesn't have cards in hand anymore, right? So you can go draw step, like they draw their card for turn, then you go draw step, you make them sacrifice a creature and also discard whatever card they just drew. So you basically just get to time walk them. So that's pretty cool. And that can just be like your a two mana removal spell that you just have in your deck um, for early, early game and, and so on. Um, could certainly work with like four mana Liliana also in, in an aggro deck, even though it's not quite as good there. Because if you're playing an aggro deck, you don't really want the just have them sacrifice a creature effect because you want more targeted removal there. Because like if they just sacrifice their worst creature, that's not as good for you because you may not be able to get through like their best creature. You, you'd rather have the like a cast down a targeted removal effect to take out their best creature because then you can attack through the the worst creature kind of thing. Uh, yeah, Priest of Forgotten God can give you mana to cast this thing right away. Yeah, you have like your, you play your Liliana, you activate Priest, add two black mana, cast Liliana's Triumph. So that's pretty cool. Um, and it is non-targeting, that is true. So like against a Shalai, uh, for example, that where they have Hexproof, it's each opponent. Man, that card is awesome in Commander, each opponent. I don't know if it's awesome in Commander. People have a bunch of crappy creatures to sacrifice, but anyway, yeah. So against Gruel Spellbreaker, yeah, that's that's perfect against Gruel Spellbreaker that has like the haste and, and hexproof kind of thing. Um, yeah, yeah. Together, yeah. So this is this is pretty nice. I like this card. So I'm thinking I'm, I'm going to give this card a C. I think this is just like a. Um, I think this could certainly just be like a role player kind of card. 
So I don't think it'll see like a ton of play. Like I don't think it's like a four of kind of card. Like a growth spiral is like a four of, and that's a B. I think this is a C. All right, Massacre Girl. Three black, black, four, four, menace. When Massacre Girl enters the battlefield, each other creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. Whenever a creature dies this turn, each creature other than Massacre Girl gets minus one, minus one. Now, I don't think y'all are going to really like my grade for Massacre Girl. I don't think Massacre Girl is very good for standard. I... Like somebody says, it's cyborg worthy versus Selesnya tokens, but I don't think it really is there because it costs five mana. I just don't. I don't expect Massacre Girl to to see much impact in the format. Um, I I all right. So if you're if you're just playing it without playing like very many other creatures where you're just trying to wipe your opponent's battlefield with Massacre Girl and you're not really playing your own creatures, it's not going to work very often. There's not very many one toughness creatures around in standard, especially ones that are alive um, on like turn five and so on. And then after they get minus one, minus one, even even if there is, then there has to be a two toughness creature for you to kill and so on. It's It's pretty hard for that to actually work. I think the best case for Massacre Girl is in your own aggro deck. And yep, yep, the set reviews are going up on YouTube. Uh, white, we've done white and blue so far. They are, those are both up on YouTube right now. And we, you know we're on black as you can you can tell the order up at the top of the screen. <clears throat> I think this is like where you're you're going to want to be playing your own creatures, and you're going to want and so you wouldn't yeah you don't you don't mind your creatures dying I guess kind of thing. But this is like a, something for like post combat, I guess. Like you can attack in with some creatures. They do like some blocks, and then after combat, you can play your Masker Girl that kills like their creatures that blocked that have like reduced toughness now, and then you're left with your Masker Girl left. Um, in the Priest of Forgotten Gods deck. So yeah. <clears throat> Unfortunately, it's only whenever a creature dies this turn. If it was just whenever a creature dies, each creature... Like, that would be kind of cool if it, like, continued on all the time. So your Priest of Forgotten Gods deck, you would sack your two creatures for Priest. Two creatures would die. This would trigger. Would these triggers happen first before the Priest trigger would continue to resolve? Yeah, I guess it would. Yeah, it would. You'd sack your two creatures, and then... All creatures get mine all other creatures get minus two minus two, so which would kill your priest of forgotten gods. So that that's kind of a that's kind of not good. As far as the body goes, four uh four four menace for five, not too not too great for standard. You know, five mana for black creatures, we're looking at like Doom Whisperer, six six flying trample that gets to surveil. Like that just seems like a lot better card a lot of the time than this even god eternal bantu being a five six menace instead of four four menace that's going to be a lot bigger um i i don't expect massacre girl i know, I know there was a lot of people high on this card whenever it was previewed um yeah lava coil yep Find finality. Yeah, the the four the four toughness is not really where you want to be. Um, does Tesa help? Yeah. Yeah, I I, f I mean I feel like this is just an F, um, but maybe you can kind of build around this. Maybe a D if you want to like you know make a a janky mask or roll deck kind of thing. Um, I do like Kaya's ghost form more. Do I? I don't know. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I do. So unfortunately, giving a low grade there to Massacre Girl. Yeah, it's it's an F, but it can it can do. I mean, obviously, it's it's a powerful rare that you know you can you can set up board states where it can do some like crazy things and so on. But I with all the other cards you can play in standard, I don't, I don't think Massacre Girl should be one of them.
<laughs> she probably will have a cool animation. So Tesa would make each death be minus two, minus two. So basically with the Tesa out, you're just going to wipe the board and then have your Massacre Girl left. Yes, Stonekeep says it could be a good sideboard card uh, in certain metagames. And that's that's a good point. Like, that's that's probably where Massacre Girl's at. Like, it's a card to know that exists, and depending on what happens with the metagame and what happens with uh, other decks that see play, it could be a sideboard card that you want access to. All right. Um, up next, Obnixilis the Hate Twisted. Yeah, Massacre Girl is probably really good in limited. I mean, just five mana four four menace is really good in limited. Also, and uh, yeah, it does a good job of post combat and limited playing it, or even pre combat playing it. So then they have really bad attacks, and then you can attack in easier, kind of thing. <clears throat> Could kill a Danto Vanguard. Yep, yep. All right. Uh, Y'all are already saying F. I haven't read this card yet. <laughs> three, fi three black, black, five loyalty. Whenever an opponent draws a card, it deals one damage to that player. Minus two, destroy target creature. Its controller draws two cards. Yeah, that's an F. <laughs> Standard five mana cards, really good. This, I mean, I guess it's, it's you know, good against the Wilderness Reclamation player, the Nexus of Fate player that's just going to draw a whole lot of cards. You can deal one damage to them every single one of those. You can destroy your own creatures to draw two cards if you want. I guess you could destroy your opponent's creature to draw two cards. I don't know. That's you're, We're not putting Omnixilis in a deck. Yeah, we can kill Fibblethip with this. Um, all right. Uh, Omnixilis' Cruelty. Two and a black instant target creature gets minus five, minus five until end of turn. If that creature would die th this turn, exile it instead. So exile removal is nice. Minus five, minus five kills most everything. Not, not necessarily everything, but a lot of stuff. So three mana instant speed removal, like destroy a creature and exile it, exile a creature. It's not bad. Um, yeah, it's like a, the black instant speed lava coil. Um, I don't think it's a B. It's not that good. Like we have a, other good removal around that in that mana cost. Like, are we are we playing this over cast downs? Not really. Are we playing this over like if you're red black, we're playing this over like bedevil, or for black white, are we playing this over mortify? Um, like. For sure, like exile doesn't even get rid of the gods. Um, yeah, lava coil being two mana is big. Three mana, you know, that's a lot more than two mana. Um, three three mana is where I'm not I'm not so sure I like this. You know, at four mana we have contempt that exiles anything and planeswalkers. Um, and if planeswalkers are pretty important in this metagame, we need our removal to kind of hit planeswalkers as well. I I think this is I don't know. I I'm I'm not really like a, I don't really see myself playing this over removal spells that we already have in standard kind of thing. I I don't know exactly where it would fit. Um Does get rid of Gideon. Oh Ooh. I'm not exactly sure. Dying slowly asks, does Conclave Tribunal work on gods? I guess Conclave Tribunal would exile the god, and the god says that if it would be put in exile, you can put it back into your library. So I, I believe that would just put it back into its library. So it's very good against Arclight Phoenix. Um, and yeah, it does kill Adanto Vanguard. Um, I don't think it's better than Cast Down, though, because of cast down costing two mana being so much more important i think i'd rather have cast down than this card but if certain cards like arc light phoenix or adanto vanguard or you know like um lira dombringer and and you know things like that if they got really big then 
you know, we start putting some Omnexus's cruelty in our deck. So I think this is the kind of card that, like, depending on the metagame would mean, like, how, you know, how much you want to play Omnexus's cruelty. Um, yeah. But the fact that we're our three male our three mana removal spell only kills creatures, doesn't kill anything else, you know, like Mortify, Bedevil, those things kill other things. And when we're going into a set that could have a lot of Planeswalkers where we need to deal with Planeswalkers, um, and it doesn't necessarily kill all creatures, you know, it, can't, it cannot kill Oketra, you know, like Oketra is a 3-6. Um, it doesn't doesn't always kill Hydroid Crisis. Wild Growth Walker can get above this. I, I, don't, I don't love it. Niv Mizzet would also just draw a card when, it, like, yeah, sure, your your removal spell could kill the Niv Mizzet, but then they they get to draw their card. Yeah, Vras's Contempt. I don't. Yeah, Vras's Contempt looks a lot better than this here. Um, it is good against uh, Rekindling Phoenix and Sarah for the Scales. Cruelty is good against those kind of cards with the Exile. So kind of it kind of depends on on the meta game with this one so it's it's a hard thing to to rate i'm going to give it a c and you know kind of depends on the metagame you know whether it, it could be like a b or it could or it could also be like an f that people don't play it um so i'll just kind of go kind of split down the middle for now and just call it a c all right price of betrayal black for a sorcery remove up to five counters from target artifact creature planeswalker or opponent this card looks like an awesome cyborg card. One mana, kill a Teferi, sign me up. One mana, kill a Nicol Bolas, sign me up. Um, I feel like I'm going to play a lot of Nicol Boluses. They're going to get killed by Price of, Price of Betrayal, and I'm going to be sad. Um, yeah, remove five counters from a Krasis. Um, yeah, like post, even if the Krasis is bigger, post-combat, you can remove counters from Krasis or Wild Growth Walker and shrink those things um hey elise yeah is elder yeah is elder spell better if you're tr wanting a cyborg card for that kind of stuff maybe maybe it is maybe elder spell is just like the better cyborg card that's that's very true yeah y'all are saying that you'd rather just have elder spell um ow. Yeah, you cannot target yourself. So yeah, you cannot you can't remove poison counters from yourself. You can remove poison counters from your opponent if you wanna if you wanna just if you're playing like your green black in fact and you wanna uh really show how many how like they could have fifteen poison counters and not not ten. Um Yeah, this this would have been. Uh, would this have been nice against energy? I don't know. Would you want to spend an entire card just to remove five energy counters from the opponent? Um, yeah, this is useful against Sultai though with Crisis and everything. So I think this is just kind of a, a card that could be a. I think this is a a fringe sideboard card. I'm going to give this a C. That's a fringe sideboard card. This does compete directly with Elder Spell. Elder Spell able to kill more planeswalkers and add loyalty to your own planeswalker price of betrayal being able to get rid of a hydroid crisis and um and also like shrink a wild growth walker while killing a vivian all right shriek diver two and a black two one flying um this is just a limited card that is not a standard card soren's thirst this is a reprint black black deals two damage to our creature and you gain two life this card's not great it's you know it's comparable to moment of craving though the black black is pretty tough uh mana cost wise you know moment of craving helps you out quite a bit there um for the most yeah most of the time moment of craving is going to be better than this um so yeah after rotation you won't have moment of craving anymore um 
So it works in the Citadel deck, yeah. You, if you want some more gain life stuff in the Citadel deck, absolutely. Um, I can't really think of a situation where this is better than Moment of Craving. Like, as far as, like, saying damage is strictly worse, isn't it? Um, it's probably not. There's probably... Pro somebody probably can think of a situation, but I can't really think of any. Where you'd want deal two damage instead of minus two, minus two. Um, yeah, if you want to trigger your enraged creatures, if you want to deal the damage to your own creatures. Against the new X... I don't know what that means. Uh, I have not said that, Obscene. Um, I, yeah. Um, my favorite card in the set? I don't I don't know. There's a lot of cards I like. Um, but. Uh, Pestilence, Pestilence Spirit. There you go. If you're playing a Pestilence Spirit deck. Okay. All right, well, like it there, like it there. All right, anyway, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give Soren's Thirst an F. I don't think it's gonna see any play, at all. Right now, um, you know, maybe after a moment of craving. Um, but yeah, it's probably just an F. For, or sorry, sorry, limited, limited rating. Sorry, it's a common, it's limited rating. Sorry, limited. So yeah, Soren's Thirst is a limited card. Fs are for rares and mythics. That won't see play. All right, Spark Harvest, Black Sorcery. As an additional cost to cast this spell, sack a creature or pay four and destroy target creature or planeswalker. I've never really liked the undercosted removal that also forces you to sacrifice something. I mean, you can pay five if you want. I've never really liked these kind of cards in standard. I feel like they... In standard, they oftentimes play worse than what they are. This is a great card in limited. Yes, this is a great, great card in limited. Because even just spending five mana to destroy, destroy a Planeswalker kind of thing. Um, but yeah, sorcery speed. Um, yeah, I think this is just a limited card. Even in like the aristocrat style decks, I don't think they really want this card. All right, Spark Reaper. There's another limited card. Two and a black, two, three. Uh, you can pay three, sack a creature, or Planeswalker. You gain a life and draw a card. I don't think you're going to be paying three mana, two, three, which is not a good not a good body in standard. And just you can spend three mana to sack something and gain a life and draw a card. I think that's like three mana is very just too high of an activation cost for standard. Tithe Bear Giant, five and a black, four, five. Whenever Tithe Bear Giant enters the battlefield, you draw a card and you lose a life. That is certainly lim just limited only. Toll of the Invasion, two black. Target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non land card from it. That player discards a card and a mass one. So this is just. Thought Erasure, that costs one more, but you get a 1-1, one, one, and you don't Surveil. Or it's, um, what's the other card? Uh, um, the one that has Spectacle for one, Drill Bit. Yeah, so it's Drill Bit, so instead of having Spectacle to, to cost the black mana, it has a mass one. I think this is quite a bit worse than either of those cards, so this is just limited. I don't think that this will, I don't think this is what you want in Standard. Unlikely Aid. Awesome card. Gideon with Rakdos. That is awesome. Cool card. Uh, just limited, though. One in a black target creature gets plus two, plus zero, and gains indestructible until end of turn. If for some reason your Feather of the Redeemed Heroic deck wants to turn, wants to go with black, also go Mardu. I guess. You can maybe play this, but that's just limited. A for card art and flavor text, though. Definitely. Vampire Opportunist, one black, two one. You can pay six and a black. Each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. That is a limited card. Uh, Vizier of the Scorpion, two and a black, one one. Whenever it enters the battlefield, a mass one. Um, I think this 
like <clears throat> we kind of talked about this is similar to like the the blue creature that was like a two two flyer that uh, amasses one that we said could potentially see some play. This also gives your zombie token creatures death touch. So like maybe you know if you you know you can like uh, have this in a Vanifar deck also of like you know a value three drop kind of thing. Um, it is a lot worse than Death Baron, yes. And I think it's just a limited card, but just saying it's it's something. But yeah, I think it's just a limited card. All right, and Vraska's finisher to be three two. Whenever it enters the battlefield, destroy target creature or planeswalker and opponent controls that was dealt damage this turn. So you can pair it up with your Soren's Thirst, deal two damage to something, and then play your finisher. But no, this is just a limited card, also. Yeah. All right. So, <clears throat> black color. Uh, that's it for the black cards. Uh, our top cards, we had Liliana as an A minus. Dreadhorde, or let's see, Elder Spell, we just called a B, being a, could be a really popular sideboard card. And then we had Bantu as a B minus, and uh, Dreadhorde Invasion as a B minus as well for our top cards in black. All right, we have uh, red, green, and the multicolor slash artifacts still to go. So if you're watching this video later on YouTube, stick around, head on over to the next video in the playlist, and I'll see you there.